I bought 12 items on Timu, and this is how they all stacked out. <sighs> Man, I got food on this one. Oh my god, it's working! Look at that carnage. So everyone by now has seen that website, Timu, and they're offering some crazy discount prices on pretty much everything. And considering this is probably the new Wish app, I can understand being pretty skeptical about it. So why waste your money when you can watch me waste mine? Wait. So here are 12 items I went ahead and bought off Timu. Let's see if I saved some money or if I got ripped. Next we got a router bit, Lock Miter. So I think these things are a new fad right now. I've been seeing them all over the place. And with the good ones ranging between 40 and $50, I thought it might be a steal because I got this for $4.48. But of course, coming at that price, I'm a little nervous. So first off, this is the case it comes in. Absolute trash, I need to build something else. Secondly, I put it in my router table and I've heard horrible things about how tedious the setup is for this. And yeah, they weren't kidding, it's horrible. There is a lot of fine tuning that you need to do for this bit. A few moments later. All right, so I'm just kidding. This is actually only my third attempt. And you can see here, I got it dialed in. Not perfect. There's definitely still a little bit of an edge on here. I bet you one or two more times I could get this dialed in almost perfect. But for only my third attempt, I think that's pretty good. I mean, you can see that it is a solid joint. And even without wood glue, I mean, it holds really good. It honestly could have cut a little bit better. I mean, for 450, I'm actually not complaining about this bit. We'll see how long it stays sharp and for how cheap it is. Hey, I ain't complaining. Let's see what else we got. Coming in at 748 is a little ground engineering square. These are awesome. You gotta have one in your shop. It's pretty super critical to know that you got at least one square that you know is completely accurate. But coming from Timu, do we know that it's completely accurate? Well, on the website, it does say it's within one tenth of a degree. This square is awesome for double checking your tools. I use it for my joiner and of course for my table saw to make sure that the blades are all lined up and running at a 90 degree angle. And it's even super nice to double check other tools to make sure that those are at 90. So engineering square at 748 you're really probably not saving that much money. But if you're always trying to save a dollar like me I think this is a good deal. Let's try the next one. So our next item is probably the one I am most excited about. Coming in at 2248, which is one of the more expensive items I got. It is an adjustable dowel jig maker. You don't run into projects where you need dowels very, very often, but it is super nice to be able to make your own custom ones. And that way you can make them out of your own wood, like maple, or even some cherry. Black walnut would be really cool. And at just over 20 bucks, it's a pretty cool deal. It's solid aluminum. I mean, it's really strong. It comes with your dowel jig jig, an Allen wrench, whatever the heck this thing is. Probably read the instructions. And uh, it's got some screws too, which isn't a big deal, but it's kind of nice. So again, it's not too often where you run into projects where you've got to make your own dowels. I actually have one really exciting one, so we're going to test it out right now. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you can see my later videos where I actually use this dowel. So to get this thing set up, I'm just going to go ahead and screw it down to a large piece of wood. If you wanted to, you could screw it down to like a workbench or something, but I want to have this thing portable. I think this should be good. So to start off, I got my piece of cherry and I just whittled down one end to make sure I got a starting point for this guide. So for this test, I'm gonna be using the biggest size possible. Cause uh... You go big or you go home. And I did run into a little bit of an issue. My plan was to just put the opposite end of the cherry into the drill, but it's not even close to fitting. So I had to really think about how I was gonna spin this into the dowel maker. And I thought about it really hard. So correct me if I'm wrong, but here's what I thought of. I ended up just drilling a screw as center as I could on the other end, and I'm just gonna essentially screw this into the dowel maker. If you guys can think of a better way, please let me know. All right, here we go. Okay, it's not working as well as I thought. All right, let's see if I can find a different screw that was better. The star bit is the best bit. Hopefully this works better. Look at that carnage. So probably maybe a little fine tuning on my end, but overall, pretty sweet dowel. It's definitely super rough, and uh, I do need to probably figure out a way where I can insert this more evenly. I can tell right here that there's a little bit of a divot, but overall, I'm actually pretty happy with this. But enough messing around with this one, let's go on to the next one. Next up at 338 is a five inch hook and loop sanding block. If you're getting into woodworking, you know you gotta sand, 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 and it sucks, sucks, sucks. No one likes sanding. I hate it! 
Put a little sanding block like this, helps out a little bit. Uh, they're great when you gotta do a little bit of hand sanding and you don't have a flat surface. It's great for rounded over edges where a sander just won't work. Hand sanding is gonna give it a much more even sand and just give you a better product at the end. It's got hook and loop on the bottom, AKA Velcro, and it works for your regular five inch disc sanding pads. You gotta wrap it around and you're good to go. It's even got fingerprints in it for a good strong grip. When you're just sanding by hand, that arthritis kicks in. This pretty much eliminates it. And yeah, this is just a great buy for your shop. Three bucks. You can't beat it. Go on to the next one. Next tool coming at a cheap 278, a woodworking measuring square. What is this called? Woodworking square size measuring ruler. So looking at this thing, all this stuff is pretty much coming from China. China. So the majority of the measuring tools come in metric. This is gonna be one of those tools, but opening this up right away, I kind of noticed, I mean, it's cheap plastic. I think I just noticed something. There's a big ass dent in this thing. And putting my engineering square on here, this thing isn't close to being square either. I guess we can check if the angles are right on it. I don't know, I ain't got much hope for this anymore. So we got a big piece of timber, and here's the reason why I bought this thing. That'd be kind of nice, because you can use it for big chunks of wood, get your 45 degree, a bunch of angles, and a little bit of measurement up here. I mean, this ruler up here isn't straight, so I'm not gonna trust this one. But one of the ideas is that you can insert a pen right here, and then just glide it along, and it'll make a line. Well, it's supposed to. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Well, they forgot to drill that last hole out. So I guess I can't use that line. <sighs> Man, I got screwed on this one. I wonder if this is even at a 45 degree. Man, I don't know what this angle is supposed to be, but it is not a 45. It's like a 50 to 55 degree. So yeah, it's uh, flimsy, not strong. I could easily break this. It's in metric, which isn't the biggest deal, but kind of sucks. Not flat, not square, not even at a 45. Yeah, kind of junk. There, you don't gotta waste your money like I did. Next tool coming in at 628 is a Tendums Gaps measuring gauge. At 628, I was kind of a little worried about the quality of this thing, but it is solid aluminum. I mean, it's pretty strong. <sighs> That was my full strength. It comes with both imperial and metric. So either one you wanna use, you can use both of them with this little thing. And if you have a router table like me, you definitely wanna go ahead and pick one of these things up. They're nice cause you can also help you cut tendons. But for my purpose, I'd much rather have it to help me set up some of these bits that I have on my router table. A lot of these trim bits, it's absolutely impossible to measure how high you actually got it up from the table. You can do your best using a ruler, but you're never gonna be as accurate as if you were to use just one of these. Got measurements all the way up to five ace, super easy to use. All you gotta do is put it over your bit and, and then just crank it up till you hit the gauge. You're gonna be taking that exact amount out of your stock. And these gauges on the sides are also to help measure out your tendons. But you can double check your bit size too on them. Or you can just trust the size of your bit. But good way to double check because they're not labeled. Overall, pretty happy with this one. I'll be saving it right here, right next to the router table. But enough of that one, let's try this next one. Our next buy, I think was the cheapest, but it honestly might be the one I use the most. Coming in at $1.97, these are a 10 piece mini triangle. I know it says paint stands, but you guys can use this for anything. And to be honest, I don't know if I'd use these quite for paint, but for putting on finishes and stains, these things are great. And at just at $2, you get 10 of these things. That's, um. 20 cents a piece. And to be honest, I thought these things were gonna be really flimsy, but it's actually pretty sturdy plastic. I would definitely trust putting a good amount of weight on here. I got four of them here and I got a crap ton of weight on these. But what I use it for the most is a finish. Something like a polyurethane, you can go ahead and coat the back and then throw it on these stands and then you can just keep going doing the other side of your project. That way you don't have to waste a whole day waiting for this thing to dry and you get your projects done a lot fast. So not the most impressive buy. I mean, it is just a triangle, but at just two bucks, it's definitely worth it. It's gonna save you a lot of time. And I actually think this is a pretty good buy. Let's see what else I got. Next up at 879, we have an eight pack of a wood hole plug cutter set. These actually come with two different kinds of plug holes. The crazy spiky one is gonna be just a tapered dowel. Meanwhile, these cylinder type ones are gonna give you a straight cut dowel. Both have their functions but taper dowels. Paper definitely helps it so you can jam it in that hole. Disgusting. Great tools. It's pretty awesome that you get one of each in this deal. Pretty much every woodworker has one of these. Nobody's perfect. You gotta use a screw every once in a while and you use these to help cover them up. There's even a lot of cool designs you can make with this thing. You can make your projects look pretty cool by using different wood species and actually enhancing those dowels and uh, just giving it a really cool look. And for eight bucks getting eight bits, it seems like a really good deal. I guess only time will really tell on this. See how long these things last, how sharp they're actually gonna be after quite a few uses, but again, for eight bucks, 
Let's see what else we got. So next up, we got another router bit. At 1098, we got a massive half inch chain bottom cleaning router bit. Another super cheap container. But well, this thing is huge. And in fact, it's so big, I can't even get it to fit in my router table. So the reason I bought it was to flatten out some slabs. Now I currently don't have any that I need flattened, so we won't be testing this out in this video, but we'll definitely be using this in the future. But for 1098, this thing actually looks pretty good. But I did have one concern right away. Now I'm not a router bit expert, but the top of this bit isn't flat. And I honestly don't think it's supposed to be, but I'm not so sure this is supposed to be this concave. I am fairly happy with my other router bit I got, but this one I am a little worried about. But enough of that, let's check this one out. Next up at 848, we have a four pack of radius jig template guides. Anyone who makes cutting boards or tables or anything where you're putting a radius, these things just help out a lot. It's easy just to slide it on your board and then throw it on your router table and you cut it off and then you just got your exact radius right there so it's a four pack but there's two different sizes on each side of these so technically you have eight different radius sizes uh, these are plastic lightweight and I'm not gonna complain about the plastic it's actually really nice and thick and it seems super durable yeah, these are nice to have I mean not much of a deal just a nice tool to have if you're looking at making your corners more right. next up at 2349 we got a two pack of 90 degree angle clamps I think this was my most expensive buy on here and kind of looking around at other prices I don't think I saved that much going to Timu. But like a lot of the other tools that we got today, these are solid aluminum. And I've actually been really impressed with how sturdy these are. I was honestly not expecting that. But this is a fun little device. If you're looking at making cabinets or picture frames, anything that needs a 90 degree angle, these are super nice little guides where you can clamp your wood beforehand and then either just screw or glue your wood into place. And as long as you got these clamped to it, you know it's gonna end up being a 90 degree angle. And comparing these to my American made square, they actually do line up perfectly. So this is a pretty nifty tool. I'll definitely be using these, but for the price, I don't know, I guess it depends what you're kind of looking for. But either way, I'm actually pretty happy and I will be using these. Now what else do we got? Next at 298, we got some countersink drill bits. I personally hate putting screws inside of projects. I more so screw them up. I screwed up. But either way, sometimes you just can't avoid them. Here we got five different sizes and they're all fully adjustable. That way you can adjust them to the screw that you're using and then you can countersink your screw into your project. And here's the cool thing about them. You can either make the screws either flush with your project or with those hole plug cutters that we talked about earlier, you can cut out a chunk of wood and just cover that up completely. You can tell pretty much right away that these are not great quality, but also they were under three bucks. So what do you expect? But if you don't use them a crazy amount of time like me, picking up something like this is a pretty good deal. All right, so that's all the video of all the crap I bought. Let me know in the comments if something you want me to check out next. Your idea might be my next video. So have a good one, and remember, don't buy junk. Trash. Actually, I mean to throw that.